It's the end of December. The Humber College Hawks are headed to suburban Philadelphia for a basketball tournament. The road trip will give the players a chance to get to know each other better off the court. Yeah, I think that's important. The team spends some time on the road and, uh, you know, it's all part of... I don't like to use the word bonding, but it's too early in the morning to think of another word. The coach knows that the more the players come together, the better the chances of winning the Canadian championship. <laughs> what he doesn't know is that the road trip will threaten to pull the team apart. Hey, Bumble. Merry Christmas, coach. Get him up. The team has been looking forward to this trip all season. The players love going to the States. I love their clothing and their shoes. Apparel. I love their money, too. For basketball players, America has a special mystique. It's where the best basketball in the world is played. The players are looking forward to the chance to prove themselves. Us going down there, they expect that they're going to beat us. They're going to be in for a shot this year because we're coming hard still. So. You'll see if we win any games this weekend, the stands will be dead quiet after we win. I'll tell you that right now. It's a long 10-hour ride to Philadelphia. But Fitzroy Woolery is happy just to be on the bus. Last term, he was on the verge of failing out. But the coach persuaded the school to give him a second chance. I truly want to send out my gratitude towards them. I just hope that they'll, they'll see by my actions that you know, I appreciate what they've done for me. Fitz never imagined he'd be happy playing basketball 10 minutes from his home. Three years ago, he was in high school, like all players dreaming of playing college ball in the States. Fitzroy's dream came true. He received a basketball scholarship to Shaw University in North Carolina. It was a long way to go to play basketball. The reception he got made him realize just how far away from home he was. And you know, they the Americans, you know, being simple-minded as they are, you know, ethno ethnocentrism. And uh, they thought I was from, from an igloo. They thought I, I had a weird accent, you know, with a Jamaican and a Canadian and, you know, it was mixed in and it just, I don't know, I, I didn't really adapt to it really well. Fitz was hoping things would improve on the court. He had expected to step right into the starting lineup. Instead, he spent most of his time on the bench. And so I just, I just had a frustrating year. I didn't like it at all. I was eating up. I was being eaten up inside. He's a victim of a lot of uh, the, the, the problems we see in, with high school basketball players today. They, they, they dream of the United States. They, they think they're going to be pro players. Often they get discarded and uh, the dreams and the promises are not fulfilled. Fitzroy's hopes had been shattered. But the biggest shock was what happened to one of his teammates. What happened, he was uh, hanging with some dudes that was into drugs. And uh, he went by the guy's house. And um, some people came in to rob him. And the guy wasn't there, but he was there with his with his, uh, his friend and a girlfriend. The guys came in looking for this, uh, this fellow, couldn't find him, and uh, told him to get down head first and shot him in his head. All three of them killed him. And from then on, I was, I wanted to get out. I was like, man, this is not a place for me. This is the first time Fitz has been back to the States. He'd like nothing better than to win the tournament.
After the long bus ride, the players head to their rooms to recover and to get ready for the tournament. Are you psyched to play against Americans? Yeah, man, this is my first time playing in like two years. You know, coming back over here and playing, so I'm excited. I want to ball. I want to win. I'm pumped up for it, but I'm like going in there to win these two games and take home the championship. I'm not looking to lose. I don't think they're good. I don't care where they're from. They could be from Chicago, Michael Jordan boys. Who cares? Tomorrow's game will give the team a chance to prove Canadians don't just play hockey. Humber's first game of the tournament is at 8 tonight. The players kill some time at a nearby mall. People wonder who the players are and why they're being followed by a film crew. Even when there's no camera, the players are used to being watched. It's part of being a young black male. Do you find race an issue in your lives? Race an issue in our lives? <laughs> it's there. We just it's don't see it every day. It's there every it's day. Everybody black. I mean, when I walk in the store and the guys and the guys watching me like, like a damn hawk. I mean, he doesn't have to say yo, you know, he doesn't have to call me names or. Be obvious about it, but I know he's just watching me for certain reasons. Exactly, you, know. you know, you don't have to say it, and you can just see it. It's just it's there. Do you feel you get harassed by the police? Hey, I'm in front of my building. I'm talking to my boy. I live in the building. We're sitting. We're just sitting talking, and then cruiser came around the side, full speed, and seen us, and trying the brakes and stopped. It's like pulling down the window, and two of them are looking out and telling us, "Oh, come here! What you guys doing here?" And start questioning us all stupid things, man. Does it make you angry? You gotta block that out. The four team tournament is being held at a predominantly white college in suburban Philadelphia. If Humber wins tonight, they'll play for the championship tomorrow. The Americans don't know much about Canada. Name one Canadian. It's Carter. Midway through the first half, Holy Family jumps out to an 11 point lead, delighting the hometown crowd. Humber can't make a shot. Their defense keeps them in the game. At the half, they trail by six. Listen, first of all, defensively, hey, we did a nice job, especially in the last five minutes of the half. And we got to start making some shots. Veteran Dexter Miller is one of the players who struggled in the first half. Last year, Dexter was an all-star and the team's most valuable player. He was looking forward to a repeat performance this year. But during the summer, Dexter had an emergency appendectomy. He was still recovering from surgery when the season began, and that made him prone to other injuries. I mean, it was just one thing after another. First, I pulled my calf, then it was my back, then it was my hand. Comes home crying. We have to get the hot water bag on his ankle swollen up and things like that. I don't come home crying. <laughs> so sad, cold crying. Oh, whatever, sad I, or I, in pain, I come man. Home <coughs> and she see me limping. So she asked me what's wrong. I said, I, I, I turn my ankle and that's about it. I have an ice pack, I go put that ice pack on and then I go about my business, do my homework, whatever. 
As a result of the setbacks, Dexter never hit his stride. He's not scoring. He, he averaged for us 16, 17 points a game last year. I think he's down to four or five a game. I mean, he's, he's in a real shooting slump. Like, I was never, like, really in a slump before. I probably had a bad game, but not over and over again, you know? It was just, it was so frustrating. Dexter was under a lot of pressure off the court as well. My schedule is so demanding that sometimes, you know, I, f I find myself not getting any sleep. Mm -hmm. In the yeah. morning, I go straight to school. And then from school, I have practice immediately after. And immediately after practice, I go straight to work and just, um, just work the whole night. Dexter works the midnight shift at a warehouse a couple of times a week to help pay the bills at home. Work, school, and basketball aren't the only things preying on Dexter's mind. Last summer, one of his friends died in the middle of a basketball game. They said he had a regular heartbeat. That really hit me hard, because, like, we grew up together. It was like, it was like right on the court. And he just died. I think he was doing a layup. And like he just collapsed. Death is something that's hard to swallow. And when you have to deal with it, you start to reflect on other things. And you know, and then I was asking, you know, how important is basketball to me? You know, is it that important? Dexter has a special reason to play well tonight. His girlfriend, along with her brother and mother, have driven in for the game. At the start of the second half, Humber finally starts making some shots. After six minutes, the score is tied. Come on, come on, come on, Dex! But the coach sees signs that the players aren't pulling together. It's close games like this one that test a team's character. It's midway through the second half. The opening game of the tournament is still up for grabs. Dexter continues to struggle. Fitzroy. With three minutes to go, the coach Thanks calls on Fitzroy to replace him. Dexter's not used to being on the bench when the game is on the line. Fitzroy scores three consecutive baskets, giving Humber the lead and silencing the hometown crowd. Humber wins by seven and advances to the tournament final. On the bus, I said, if you win a game, listen how quiet it is. Listen, do you hear anything? Told you. <laughs> Dexter doesn't join in the celebration. He's upset because the coach took him out at the end of a close game. You came to see Dexter? <laughs> The coaches aren't happy either. Not because of the way Dexter played, but because of the way he reacted to being benched. He didn't handle it well from my standpoint because he kind of pouted and he went to the end of the bench and he was disappointed and very vocal about his displeasure in the locker room. Dexter isn't the only player the coaches are upset with. Some players complained about their playing time. Others were critical of their teammates. 
That kind of behavior can destroy a team's cohesion and hurt their chances of winning. Half-brothers Chris and Marcel, who this year are playing together for the first time, share the coach's concerns. There were guys that were upset after the game, even though we did win. You know what I mean? But I think if we're able to get the message across that the team won, yeah, you didn't get to do what you normally wanted to do, but we won as a whole. Be satisfied with that and expect more next game. In the championship game, if we win, we all get a ring. It's not just one guy, the guy who played the most minutes. You know, it's everybody gets a ring. That's all I want. An overnight snowstorm nearly forces the cancellation of today's game. But the team isn't focused on winning the championship. Yesterday's events have pushed them apart. The coach knows how quickly dissension can spread. He must try and stop it before it infects his team. I don't think it's any secret that uh, coaching staff is not at all thrilled with some of the behavior that we see during games. And, and what it reflects in the end is that you guys like to win, but you also like to have your needs met personally. You want your requisite amount of playing time. You want your number of shots. You're pissed off when something doesn't happen, whether it's a teammate or a coaching decision. There seems to be a lack of trust, and that is a path to sure destruction. If you didn't get your needs met that day, then what you have to do is you have to say, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, I got upset personally, but now I understand that the team came first. Because you made the choice to sacrifice six months of your time, and there were no guarantees. And you'll play all the pickup and all the bullshit after. You will, but you will never experience this moment again. All right, let's go. Let's go out there and see what happens. You know, I started thinking about, you know, what I did the night before. I mean, sometimes it takes time. You know, you need time to cool off, and actually then you can start thinking straight. And then I was, like, reflecting back on what happened. I was like, man, Dexter, man, what happened there? That wasn't like you. Dexter decides to apologize to his teammates. I apologize for my behavior yesterday. Did I act maturely? Did I support you guys? But today's another day. We're going to go out there. We're going to support each other, all right? Yeah. yeah. Let's do yeah. this, man. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Humber is playing Damien College from Buffalo. The two teams have played each other before. Humber has never won. The snowstorm has kept all but a handful of fans away. The teams trade baskets for most of the half. The Hawks are at the top of their game. But they still trail by four at the half. Do they have what it takes to bring the championship trophy home to Canada? Keep moving, keep moving. A few minutes into the second half of the championship game, Humber erases Damien's four point lead. The game seesaws back and forth. With less than a minute to go, Humber goes up by one. But a Damien free throw ties the game. Humber has the ball and a chance to regain the lead. But with 14 seconds to go, they throw the ball away. A timeout gives Humber a chance to regroup. With 11 seconds left in the game, Damien passes the ball to their best player, 
He takes a jump shot from the corner. The team scramble for the rebound. The ball goes out of bounds. The call goes Humber's way. The game is tied. With two seconds to go, Humber takes a desperation shot to win the game. Third-year player, Jeremy Walters, is the hero of the day. Dexter played a solid game and contributed 10 points to the team's victory. Yeah, we brought him home for Canada, yeah. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> the championship is the perfect birthday present for Marcel. The team heads home right after the game. Morning. I have 23 Canadians uh, from Upper Collie. It's New Year's Eve. Players head their separate ways. When they come back, they'll begin a new term in school and the final drive to the national championship. <laughs> 